over to you. All right, thank you. Uh, hello, and welcome to today's webinar on monitoring Cassandra with the SE Ops Center. My name is Obi Anamnachi, and I'm a consultant with Anon Corporation. Um, we work a lot with Cassandra technology, so this is one of the topics um, that is important to talk about. Um, this webinar is going to cover just some of the basics of Cassandra monitoring, what it is, why you might want to do it, and what the various uh, methods for that are. We'll talk about DSC Ops Center specifically and the um, features that it provides, both the ones related to monitoring and the ones not related to monitoring. Uh, though we will spend significantly less time on the ones not related to monitoring. And then we'll talk specifically about the features that DSE Ops Center provides for monitoring, specifically in three categories, which are um, dashboards, alerts, and metrics history. And if you have a question during the course of this webinar, you can put it in chat. Um, I will be stopping in between sections and also at the end for questions. Um, and we'll also have a short demo where we look at Ops Center um, and see some of the features that it provides. Uh, so Cassandra monitoring. It's definitely important to have some form of monitoring on your Cassandra clusters, um, because when you want to ensure optimal performance, you don't want your cluster slowing down in times of heavy load. Um, you want to troubleshoot small problems that pop up before they turn into big problems. And then if you have those big problems, you want to know all about them, be able to diagnose them, be able to figure out how to fix them. Um, and there are two general types of Cassandra monitoring solutions. One of them is JVM based because Cassandra is written in Java um, and uses JMX um, in order to provide metrics uh, to other programs. Um, you can get those same stats via the node tool command for an individual node and look at them via jconsole as well. Um, and this is also the method that Op Center ties into. Um, and over on the right, you can see Prometheus, which is another monitoring solution, um, also ties in via JVM. And then there are log-based log methods, um, which are in some ways both less and more powerful. Um, like the ELK stack, which is Elastic, Logstash, and Kibana, um, where you take your logs and then you use Kibana to visualize them um, to get some of the same functionality as your real-time JVM-based metrics um, afterwards in logs. Uh, we actually have, it's either a Cassandra lunch talk or a previous webinar on using that technology stack to do Cassandra monitoring. Um, so it can be found on our blog and or YouTube channel. So DSC Ops Center specifically, it's a tool provided by Datastax. It can do both the monitoring and administration of Cassandra clusters, specifically Datastax based clusters, um, although older versions of Ops Center also provide their monitoring functionality for non-DSC Cassandra clusters. Um, new versions specifically do data stacks based Cassandra clusters, especially DSE. Um, and a huge part of that is all the administration features that you have access to for things like creating clusters, creating nodes, um, configuring those and setting security for them um, for new DSC nodes all of which can be done through Op Center. Um, although today what we're going to focus on is Op Center monitoring. Um, all of the administration and configuration tools are tied in with Op Center Lifecycle Manager or LCM, whereas all of the functionality that we're going to talk about today generally um, is tied in with Op Center monitoring, which is the other half. Um, and specifically, the three things that we're going to focus on are dashboards, alerts, and metrics. So starting up on the monitoring dashboard. Um, so you can see the very basic front screen in the picture below. Um, so this is what it looks like. You have uh, three nodes connected in a cluster currently. Um, there are alerts going on, um, which we'll cover in a little bit. But first thing um, 
to notice is that it shows you the health of your cluster straight up. Um, that's very important to know when nodes are down or up is basically one of the first things you need to know about your cluster. Um, so this monitoring dashboard has some metrics already included on it. There are other views in which you can add an edit different metric graphs so that they show you the correct time frame that you want and the correct metrics that you want. Uh, you have access to a bunch of the standard JMX metrics and then also a bunch of Cassandra specific metrics. And if you are running an analytics cluster, um, DSE cluster, it can also give you access to the Spark console and tell you a little bit about the um, Spark functionality going on in your cluster. So um, what are the important metrics to focus on? Um, we'll take a little bit of a look at how you would view these um, later during the demo. But some of the most important things that you want to know about your um, cluster whenever you look at it is node status, very important, whether a node is up or down and can receive requests or not. Um, and that also determines whether you have access to those replicas. Um, the data on it, if it's not replicated in other places and a node goes down, you just don't have access to that data anymore. Um, read, write requests, uh, well, read and write requests have a bunch of different stats associated with them, um, but there are a lot of very important ones like requests per second, um, how many requests is your cluster receiving, split into read and write requests, how long is it taking your cluster to, to fulfill those, um, and how many are timing out or resulting in failure, um, which is very important if you're serving data to customers uh, to know how long it's taking them to get it and how many requests you're going to have to process in a given amount of time. Uh, so you want to know when your load is high, when your load is no, uh, when your load is low, sorry, uh, so that you can do some of the other um, administration things like schedule compaction or other things like that, which require resources that your cluster could use to serve requests. And so it's better to have them take place in off peak hours. Um, you also get stats about compaction and garbage collection. Um, there are a variety of stats that apply to both, um, but it's hard to choose a small selection of ones that are really important, like you can with read write requests. Um, you can get stats on memory used. Uh, all of the different thread pools have their own metrics associated with them and how much resources they use. You can get table specific metrics like partition size, tombstone count, and SS table count. And then you can also get cluster wide metrics for things like disk usage and CPU usage. And those are just some of the metrics that uh, OpCenter provides you tools to measure. So alerts. Alerts, um, basically they trigger on events which would get logged. Um, so when you're doing log analysis based monitoring, um, these are the type of things that you would end up looking at. Um, but alerts specifically are actually just a level of event that can go into your event log. Uh, so the levels are listed here, they're debug, info, warn, error, critical, and alert. And you can actually cause things that are at a lower level to send out alerts anyway if you want. Um, and then OpCenter's alert functionality also allows you to use those alerts um, to trigger different messaging. Uh, so you can set it up to send emails, you can set it up to send curl post requests, or you can set it up to integrate with Enterprise Monitoring Solution. Um, and then having it be able to send post requests enables it to basically, um, it allows you to create custom alert solutions, custom alert monitoring solutions, and also allows it to integrate with things like Slack that have webhooks available um, that you can send to. And then you can also configure when alert messages get sent out, um, whether it triggers on specific event, on metrics levels, or in events within particular clusters. Um, and your historical metrics features are tools that OpCenter provides um, in order to keep track of your metrics across, across longer periods of time. 
So normally Op Center by default will store all of its metrics in a Cassandra key space. Um, well, it will always store it in a Cassandra key space. But whether that is in the cluster that's being monitored or in another cluster is up to you. It's a thing you can configure. Uh, by default, it stores it in the monitored cluster. Um, but if you have storage concerns, um, you can force Op Center to store its metrics data somewhere else. Um, after some amount of time, that data expires and is deleted. How long that takes is also configurable. So if you don't have very much storage space to spend, you can delete your um, expired metrics. You can delete metrics more often, have them expire faster. And if you have a bunch of extra storage space, you can keep your metrics around for longer. Um, one of the ways that Op Center saves space um, is that by default, its own key space and all of the normal Cassandra system key spaces are exempt from monitoring but you can configure that as well. If you would like to monitor the key space where Op Center stores its data, you can do that. And if you want to monitor all of the tables and key spaces where the Cassandra system files are stored, you can do that as well. Um, and if you have other key spaces that you don't want to be monitored, you can add those to the ignore list uh, so that they are no longer being monitored as well, which is another way you can potentially save some disk space. Okay, and the way you keep your metrics over a longer time frame beyond the time when they would expire and get deleted um, is that you can export them to other monitoring solutions. Um, if your cluster is controlled by the lifecycle manager, you can do that pretty much with a single button press um, in Op Center. Although if your cluster is not being controlled by the lifecycle manager, um, then you cannot really do that uh, as easily. But you can download diagnostic data um, as a tarball. That's something you can do within Op Center, regardless of whether your cluster is created by the lifecycle manager or not. And you can generate cluster reports and export those. Um, cluster reports are generally more in a, uh, like what is the current state of the cluster, um, rather than having all this historical data in there. Uh, but it's still a potentially useful tool. Uh, so we're going to go into the demo in a little bit, but if there are questions, you can put them in chat now. All right, only planning to spend a little time waiting for questions now because we need to get into the demo. So, um, Regarding the demo, there's actually a slight problem. Um, the cluster that I brought up for testing um, is having some communication problems with Op Center. Uh, so as you can see, there are two nodes connected to Op Center, um, but they're having communication troubles. So we're not going to be seeing any data in our graphs. And we also don't really have any way to work with alerts. Um, but speaking of alerts, one thing we can see is where's the event log? Here we are. Um, so we can see some of the events that happened before the communication trouble started, um, which are the Op Center node starting up, the nodes being connected, and then them failing to communicate properly. I believe this problem is caused by the uh, Docker for Windows networking. Um, so this should be easy to fix. Uh, well, you shouldn't have to fix it if you're working on a Linux system. Um, although if you would potentially like some help in fixing this, um, you can email solutions at Anant um, and maybe that email will be forwarded to me and I can share what I've learned trying to fix this problem. So this is our front page generally. It will show you the health of your cluster in the top left. Um, how much data, and then some various stats about repair, backup, um, and performance. Also, it will have best practices about configuration of your cluster. Um, so it will tell you how many rules you've passed, how many rules you failed. Sometimes it is fine to fail best practices tests if you're doing something specific. Um, but other times it is best to change your 
uh, implementation in order to keep with them. Uh, you can also see various views of how your cluster is set up. Um, so these should also, well, it should show a full ring, first of all, and they should be colored with uh, their health. Green if they're in good health, red if they're in bad health, but currently they are unable to communicate and so their state is unknown. So you get these gray circles. And then another consequence of that is that we can't see all of these stats. Um, so you can get this, this is actually a really interesting good report to have. Uh, gives you information on memory usage and storage capacity on your particular node. Um, and down here in thread pool stats, it actually shows you the status of every single thread pool running on that node. Um, and then also active pending and completed uh, tasks for that thread. Um, so that's a really useful tool to have if you're diagnosing issues. Um, but we cannot get much out of it now. And then the general monitoring dashboard, it shows you your cluster health as well as any active alerts, uh, although we don't have any. And all the rest of these graphs are empty, um, but these are the default ones that it provides you, storage capacity, write requests, um, write request latency, disutilization, and OS load. But by pressing add graph here, you can choose from this huge list of metrics. Uh, as you can see, some of them are JVM metrics. These are ones regarding garbage collection. Um, and then there are a huge number of metrics, some of which, like I said, are specifically JVM based, some of which are Cassandra specific. Um, you can choose which nodes you want these graphed for. Uh, so you can say data center one, the individual nodes or the aggregate nodes, or all the nodes that are connected to op center right now, or just connected to this cluster. You can also specify it based on tables, although the only tables currently in these clusters, uh, although they can't connect anyway, are the op center table and the Cassandra um, system tables, which are exempt from monitoring. Uh, so when you create your own tables, you'll be able to narrow down based on those tables. And you can put new graphs here on your dashboard to show up whenever. Like I said, we can't really work with alerts, um, but something that we can do is there is the report generation button, uh, which will give you a simple report about your cluster, how many nodes are up, what their statuses are. Although right now this isn't really populated uh, because of that same networking error from earlier. Right. Uh, so this is my webinar on DSE monitoring with Ops Center. Um, if there are any questions, you can put them in the chat now. Um, if you would like to know more about or not, you can contact us with the contact info below. Uh, and if you would like to later on, um, once I have fixed the current problems that are holding me back from really uh, showing off the capabilities of Ops Center, um, if you would like to know how I fix them, you can send an email to solutions that are not that they can forward to me, um, who will then get back to you about that. But if you have questions, you can put them in the chat now, and then we will finish up in a little bit. Okay, I am not seeing any questions in chat, uh, so I'm going to finish up. Once again, this has been Obi Anam Nachi, um, doing a webinar for an art corporation. Thank you for watching. Uh, thank you for being here tonight, and have a nice night.